all right and welcome back and this is a cheat master and uh, in this video this is a demo video i'm going to explain the timing sequence and the standard timing diagram of the intel series 6 and 7 which is the kb lake and the sky lake cpu single cpu they are also a part of the cpu and pch separated which is the 100 series which matches the sixth generation of cpu which is the sky lake right and uh, i'm going to show you uh, the timing so knowing the timing is very important in the repair process all right so the timing is based on the chipsets it's not on the brand of the laptop the board itself has a timing but understanding the chipset timing can take you a far way of increasing the repair rate during the maintenance process so i have an image here of the timing which is the intel series 6 power management timing diagram all right so this is the timing this is a demo class right so I'll, I'll explain as much as i can right and uh we're going to start from here as you can see we have vcc rtc srt series set and so forth and over here we have three columns we have the source we have destination and we have the signal name so the source which is from board and we have destination which is going to the cpu and the signal name as you can see right so this is the timing we're going down in the uh, from here all the way down right and um this is the timing and uh, I'm going to explain each signal as I go through along with the timing right I also have here the schematic for reference which is a Skylake U right as you can see Skylake and PCH both of them are integrated into one chip right so the physical appearance of this chip is uh, one let me just get the picture I have an image here okay so I have an image here right of the cpu generation family as you can see we have here uh, a set of chips so this first set of chip as you can see this is a uh, intel series 100 uh, pch which is the uh the night the 100 series hm176 and hm177 right and it matches the sixth generation of uh, cpu this is a skylake cpu right so this is an intel series 100 series pch which matches the Six and seven generation, which is the Cable Lake and Skylake CPU. Over here, we have the 300 series CPU, which is a uh, HM370, right? And this is the eight and nine generation of CPU, right? Which is known as the Coffee Lake, right? And this is the Union Point, which is the 300 series CPU, right? And um, over here, we have the single CPU, this is a six gen. CPU this is a Skylake CPU as you can see we have two cores one for the CPU and one for the PCH right this is a fifth gen and this is a fourth gen as you can see one die is smaller than one and uh, you can see that this is a fourth generation which is a larger CPU die and this is the fifth generation which has a smaller CPU with core die and this is the PCH section inside of it so this is a fifth and fourth gen so this is the Haswell this is the Broadwell and this is the Skylake right so these are the CPU generations right so CPU and PCH is now joined together into one chip and you have the CPU and PCH which is separated so these are the two architecture that you should be familiar with all right so uh, so uh, so the CPU generations here we have from first gen Arundel which matches the Intel Series uh, 5, which is the HM55 and HM57 PCH. We have the second generation, which is the Sandy Bridge, and the third generation, which is the Ivy Bridge, which is uh, the seventh gen third HM76 uh, and HM70 PCH. And this one is the HM65 and HM67 PCH, matches the second generation of the Sandy Bridge. And the Sandy Bridge and the CPU and the third gen CPU, they can be interchanged. They are basically the same. Right, we have the fourth generation which is the Haswell. We have Haswell ULT and we have single CPU version and the Sharp Bay ULT, which is a single CPU version also. We have the fifth gen which is the Broadwell and the Broadwell ULT, which is the single CPU, right? And sixth gen, which is the Skylake, and we have the Skylake ULT, which is a single CPU version, and we have the KB Lake and we have the eighth gen, which is the Coffee Lake. So these are the generations with the CPU code name right very important to know this right so you can identify so by looking at the chips you can identify the different uh types of chipsets cpu chipsets 
right just by looking at them you can know oh this is a fifth gen this is a fourth gen this is a sixth gen or whatever okay all right so we're gonna look at the timing here as i said before all right i have a, the schematic here for reference which is um uh, uh hp which is a uh, pro book it's a x61c right and this is the the, the the schematic that i'm going to use as a reference so this is the block diagram of uh, the schematic as you can see this is a sky lake u which is a single u just like this one right this one this is just like the same cpu that's on the board and uh and this is the block diagram as you can see the cpu manages everything that is uh connected so for example the ram which is a ddr3l right if it's a skylake cpu it can use a ddr4 it can go up to 16 gigabytes of ram and it supports the output of edp not lbds so it's a high definition fhd which is a high resolution free uh uh display output edp embedded display port we also have display port to vga and this vga is a translator to translate it to vga this is known as a translator because this is an auxiliary sorry this is an uh, analog signal output this chip doesn't support the output of analog signal so it needs to go through a conversion chip in order to output analog signals all right display port right this is another chip that is with ps82 which is responsible for uh, taking out the hdmi information because of the high frequency right so this also prevents signal reflect signal to be lost and signal reflection right we also have it manages the graphics controller right amd Right, this is for an output of the uh, dedicated graphics card, right? And it also has the these the video RAM, DDR3, right? These are the VRAMs for discrete only, as you can see. So if the board is a discrete board, which has a dedicated graphics card, it is driven by uh, P PCI X Express, right? And also there are four pieces of 16 uh, bits of uh, video RAM. All right, it also manages the hard drive through a SATA 3 or PCI Express bus, right? Uh, and uh, we have here the LPC interface is the EC, which is an embedded controller, the EC. And the EC manages the keyboard, it manages the battery, the, t the fan, right? Uh, function connection, which is another feature. Uh, we have here a BIOS, as you can see, it is shared on the BIOS. The SPI ROM is a 16 megabyte ROM so it's it's sharing its bios with the cpu right and here's another spi interface and this is a tpm which is a security uh section xpd xps is for a, a, a form of an expansion uh we have audio which is a connection which is the drivers which is the codec and it is controlling the digital microphone the speaker and the combo jack which has headphone and he earphone which is uh one jack that does two functions all right, we also have here NGFF, which is for connecting a solid state drive, uh, SATA PCI Express 4 bit bus. All right, we also have uh, for the LAN, and we have for the SSD, so two of the same slots. All right, we also have for the LAN, which is connected through the PCI Express bus one by one lane, and it is connected to the RJ45. This is the codec which stores the drivers. We also USB 2.0 interface, which is used to con uh, control the camera and the touchpad and the touchscreen all control to usb 2.0 all right and uh, we have an ngff for the one LAN combo and a sim card which is also connected to the usb bus we also have usb 3.0 interface which is a standard usb 3.0 port and usb 2.0 for external odd support right optical disk drive for usb 2.0 and 3.0 a very good machine pretty nice all right so we're gonna go for the timing as you can see we have intel series 6 which is the sixth generation which basically matches the this one the same timing can be used but there's a slight difference because the cpu and pch is separated some of the signals are, are generated from the pch to the cpu with the single cpu you can't see that because it's already taking place so that's what made the timing a little bit different but most of it is the same all right so first we're going to look at the vcc rtc all right vcc rtc which is the VCC, which is RTC. Anybody can tell me what RTC stands for? 
RGC stands for real time clock, right? Which is an integrated quartz crystal clock that's inside of the CPU or the PCH. Well, we're going to call it CPU since we're focusing on a single U. It's not a PCH class, right? It's a single CPU. So this is a small digital quartz clock inside of the CPU, which is basically running the time. Even when the computer is turned off, there's a small button cell battery or from the main battery because newer notebooks now have their main CMOS battery powered by the main battery. And that's the shape of a tablet like battery. So the VCC RTC is powered by that battery to run the time and the date, right? And other CMOS operation and parameters that are stored inside of the CPU in the BIOS is also programmed and stored and powered by the RTC circuit. So VCC RTC, which is a real time clock. So let's go over to the schematic and we're going to look at VCC RTC. VCC RTC. Right? So I searched that. And uh, as you can see, I have the VCC RTC uh, code name, which is the name that is integrated inside of the Skylake U. And this name never changes and it always matches the timing. It always matches the timing. All right, so VCC RTC is connected. This is the ball pin name. So AK19 and BB14. So it's two BGA pins and the output external we have plus three volt underscore rtc and we have two capacitor here acting as a filter all right so if there's any fault with these filter capacitors if these are shorted due to corrosion like water damage or any juice or any form of oxidation it will cause no trigger so you press the button on the laptop and it doesn't respond right because the rtc section is not powered right so as i said before it's real time clock and this clock is very important to store CMOS information and other parameters instead of the BIOS. So let's take a look at where the signal is coming from, and it is plus three volt underscore RTC, plus three volt underscore RTC, and we paste it right there, and we are going to go down until we find the signal. So this is not it. Nope. Okay, here we go. So it is RTC power trace, right? And uh, this is the RTC power connector this is the rtc battery connection as you can see bat underscore c o n n and it's coming out of the cmos of the battery and it is coming to become plus three volt underscore rtc underscore zero at the same time another part is going to this 1k resistor r180 and it becomes plus three volt underscore rtc one and we have another part here this is an or application of a diode as you can see this diode is an OR diode, so the voltage is coming from both sides, right? So one is coming from this side, and one is coming from this side. So one is coming from the battery, and one is coming from our standby. This is our standby PWM chip, so this is a plus 3 volt always. So in a, when the battery is connected and the SMPS is uh, generated, generated the standby voltage, this voltage will be coming to this diode and at the same time this battery voltage is coming so what will happen is that this voltage will replace the voltage that is coming from the battery to conserve the battery power so the battery power will stop here it won't go anywhere and it will be replaced by this voltage to produce rtc plus 3 volt rt underscore rtc which is the rtc well power supply All right so this battery voltage will be replaced with the 3 volt but when the battery is disconnected or it's dead or the adapter is not connected so if you connect the battery or adapter this voltage will be generated and it will be replaced by this battery power supply but when the battery is removed and the adapter is removed or the battery is, is not um, working or the battery is dead then this will constantly provide power for the RTC right and it becomes plus 3 volt RTC so this is where it's coming from right so this voltage is very important the lack of this voltage will cause no trigger so you press the button there is no response all right so that is how it's generated so this voltage is three voltage let me just get my text tool so this voltage so vcc rtc all right let me just uh, get this a bit smaller so vcc rtc is the RTC power supply uh, RTC well power supply right let me 
zoom out. Alright. Alright, so this so this uh, voltage should not be below 2.5 volts right if it's yes all right so rtc power supply should not be below 2.5 volts it's below 2.5 volts then it's a problem right it should uh, cause the rtc well to be powered up normally prematurely and cause all kind of indescribable faults right so you have to be careful and to, to, to make sure and take note of this uh information all right so let's go back to the timing so our next signal we have rtc rst and srtc sr tc rst sorry so these are two reset signals so we have the supply now we have the reset so the reset signal which is rtc reset which is the reset signal to uh reset the rtc well so uh let me get the point to fix here okay so this srtc reset and rtc reset which is used to reset the rtc well so if you notice the timing from here let me get a smaller point if you notice the timing from here to here this is the reset path so this voltage this time must not be below 18 milliseconds right it should not be below 18 milliseconds kind of difficult to draw the mouse so 18 milliseconds it is the time so after 18 milliseconds this voltage will rise so from here to here that's a valid reset signal and it must not be below 18 milliseconds so that is why during the rising process of the power supply of the rtc well it is being reset remember there's a hash sign at the rtc reset and the srtc reset that means it's valid when it's a low level so when rtc reset is low and vcc rtc is being powered it is being generated it, it is being generated at that time between this time and this time and that's about 18 milliseconds then it will rise and become 3.3 volts high all right so let's take a look at the schematic so srtc reset oh here it is rtc reset right rtc reset and we have srtc reset so there are two resets so what is this reset for because as you can see based on the timing we have two resets so we have rtc reset and we have srtc reset so there are two reset signals so srtc reset is basically the second type reset signal and rtc reset is the first reset signal for the rtc section this srtc reset signal was implemented in, in, in hn uh, intel series 6 pch which is hm65 from intel series 4 and below 5 and below then it was rtc reset right so srtc reset is implemented in uh sorry in intel series 5 and above in ich4 it is rtc reset no srtc reset right so srtc reset is added in intel series 5 to reset the me region the management engine so many of you guys who repair laptops should come across the me region what is it and the uh, me region it is and what it does so the me region is a small computer or a small subcomputer system inside of the bios which is a section in the bios which is used to uh do to talk to the active management technology amt and that is a way of doing remote controlling right doing hardware inspections if the computer is unusable and it's not booting you can use it through the lan so if it supports an original intel lan you can remote control that computer through the active management technology and the ME region is activated both of them then you can do hardware inspections and other types of software inspections and so forth and you can power the machine through that right so that is the purpose of the SRTC reset now I'm gonna go to the timing diagram of the data sheet I'm gonna look for the data sheet for the um, HM65 uh, data sheet so the HM65 data sheet and we're going to look for the SRT series set. So this is an Intel Series 6 series, which is this HM65 and HM67 uh, PCH. All right. And we're going to look for uh, SRTC RST. 
Aia m-a chiar să fie la să vine mare. Ai să la... So, uh, that's not it. Let me see if I can find that information for you. RTC reset and SRTC reset. La, 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 la. Alright. R S R ah, let's find R T C R S D first. R T C R S D. I want to show you the, the what it is uh, the complete information about it. Alright, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. Alright, let me just see if I can quickly Ah here we go. So ah uh, ha ha so here is it. Alright so RTC reset to clear CMOS. So on a desktop motherboard, there's a jumper on the RTC. You can short these two pins and clear CMOS values as well as reset into default state of the configuration. Right? So on the desktop motherboard, there's a jumper. Some laptops motherboard like the Quanta boards carries a jumper. You can short those two pins on the laptop and clear the CMOS. Right? And um, SRTC reset is uh close here i thought they were together uh all right so that's rtc we uh, reset i want to find srtc reset info all right so Just going to see. Uh, I was looking for it, but I didn't find it. Uh, all right, so I'm just checking. I'm not seeing it. There's a small information for it. supposed to be right here all right so they so this one is not having the information that I wanted to find SRTC reset is, uh, as I said before, is the management engine reset, the MEV John reset firmware, right? Uh, all right, so that's for the uh, MEV John. So this is for the MEV John, which is to reset the ME portion of the uh, MEV John well. All right, so that's the, basically what it is. All right, so the next signal, so RTC reset, as you can see, let me finish. RTC reset, as you can see, we have a resistor and a capacitor. Can anybody tell me what kind of circuit is this? This is known as a RC delay circuit, right? So R, which stands for resistor, says R, right? C, hold on, let me turn off here. All right, so it's RC delay circuit. Alright, so it's an RC delay circuit. The circuit is better on. Alright, so RC delay circuit is a resistor and a capacitor. Right? To delay, to come in at a certain time. 
as the notice we have a 20k resistor and we have a one microfarad capacitor here so what will happen that when this 3 volt rtc comes through this resistor this capacitor will be charged at a certain time so how to calculate this it's resistance all right, resistance multiplied by capacitance so we have a 20k resistor here all right so we have 20k right which is multiplied by 1 which is equal to 20 milliseconds right so 20 milliseconds remember we said that the rtc circuit must not be below 80 milliseconds so 20 milliseconds which is the maximum time for this portion to be reset right from here to here is 20 millis 80 milliseconds but for this 20 seconds 20 milliseconds is enough for resetting the rtc well so that is why it's having a delay and the same here for the srtc reset any fault with these two resistors and capacitors can cause power down or abnormal faults so for example if the resistance if the rtc section is uh discharging then it can cause power down it can power the machine but it will power down right and you have to use oscilloscope with the working conditions to capture your fault in a power down fault right so that is why it's important to know the functionality of a delay circuit and the rtc well circuit right all right so the next signal we have 32.768 kilohertz which is a sine wave using the oscilloscope so what will happen when the rtc well is powered and get reset the pch will send a oscillation of a sine wave right of a sine wave right a sine wave this is a sine wave to the crystal right and the crystal will then send back a, another pulse to the pch and there are a difference they are different right one is smaller and one is a shape different from one so you have to take note to ensure that the crystal which is a 32.768 crystal is working right so let's search for R, uh, rtc x1 this is the standard name rtc x1 so rtc x1 which is a standard name inside of the pch in the cpu right oops right this is the skylight u and we have rtc x1 and rtc x1 let's copy this signal and see where it's going uh coming from rather As you can see it's coming from our crystal and this is a 32.768 kilohertz so rtc x1 which is a crystal as you can see right it's 32.768 kilohertz so this is the crystal and it is going to the pca the cpu and it is going to oscillate 32.768 kilohertz right uh let me see if i can find a waveform of the example of the uh waveform i have some waveform oscilloscope waveforms but i have a screenshot let me see if i can find a 32.768 kilohertz uh nope i don't have any all right so the 32.76 kilohertz is a sine wave right and it is a sine wave like this all right and that's how you know your crystal is working and your clock is working so if there is no vcc rtc if vcc rtc is not coming and rtc reset is not coming then you won't have 32.768 this is the timing so if you measure the crystal during the maintenance process and you measure the crystal sorry and you measure the crystal here and there's no waveform then you should check vcc rtc and srtc reset if srtc reset is okay and 32 points and uh and vcc rtc is okay and you are not getting any waveform first you check these resonance capacitors these are used to offset the frequency they can go bad you replace these if there's no waveform then you replace the crystal or what you can do you can use a multimeter you can measure here you can get 0.2 volts here and here you get 0.4 volts here if there's voltage and there's still no waveform then you replace the crystal if there's voltage if there is no voltage right and you have to replace in the crystal then you replace the cpu this is the order right so you first measure the voltage you can use a multimeter you can measure here you get 2.0.2 .2 volts on one side and one side you get 0.4 volts right you can also measure the resistance from here to here 
right and you get something about 780 ohms right on both sides if there's no reading you get ol on both sides that means there's a broken line under the bj so what you have to do is you have to lift the cpu and run a wire on the bj pad to catch it back right and then you can uh measure the resistance you should get about 750 ohms on both lines and that means the rtc is connected to the bj right this is the maintenance process all right so let's move on to the next one which is uh vcc dsw which is three underscore p3 right vcc dsw underscore three p3 this is the vcc this is known as the deep sleep well right vcc dsw so the deep sleep well is an implementation in intel series 6 for the deep sleep this is known as to put the computer in a, a lower power mode remember these cpus are low power cpus right these cpus are low power consumption cpus they are used to turn on they are used to low power so their maximum current is most times about 0 0.5 ampere right 0 0.45 right 0 0.2 if it supports in the edp 0 0.2 0 0.35 ampere right of current so it's a low power consumption so intel has implemented this with the turbo boost technology to lower the power consumption of the cpu and the computer so it doesn't take a lot of power all right so the deep sleep well is a form of a part of that implementation right to put the computer to different stage which is known as acpi which stands for advanced power configuration interface all right so deep sleep vcc dsw let's take a look at the same vcc dsw right if not a lot of motherboards support the deep sleep well for example apple most apple machines support deep sleep well but ordinary machines doesn't support the deep sleep so if it doesn't support the deep sleep then what will happen that is that vcc sus three underscore uh vcc prim and vcc dsw will be connected together with the same power supply this is normally powered by a pwm power supply all right pwm which stands for pulse width modulation and this is if the board doesn't support the deep sleep then vcc prim 3p3 and vcc dsw 3p3 will be connected to the same power supply and vcc prim 3p3 is the pcpu standby power supply right so let's take a look at the vcc dsw we're going to look and see if this board supports the deep sleep all right so first we have vcc dsw which is one volts all right vcc dsw all right let's go down to the next one we have vcc dsw as you can see vcc dsw 3 underscore 3p so this is the standby name and right inside of the s skylake u also and this is the standby name for it so the name doesn't change all right the name doesn't change vcc dsw all right and this is the bj pin ad17 and let's see who it's powering and it's powered by 3 volt pcu so 3 volt pcu is a uh, normal yeah pwm power supply all right so this goes to a lot of places let me just jump and go down to about here uh, that's not it 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 all right i think i've gone back too far uh let me go up the line that's not it 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 let me zoom out all right that's not it that's not it let me see here oh no nope, that's not it Yeah, that's not it. That's not it. Uh, nope. Nope. All right, here we go. So we're at it now. So as you can see, we have a chip here. This is our chip, which is SY8208. And this chip is uh, normally powering our PWM. As you can see, we have an inductor. We have filter capacitors, right? And a PWM chip. As you can see there's no upper and lower mosfets so they're all integrated into this chip 
as you can see the phase output which is switch once you see this switch on a, any schematic ic on a schematic using the ic of the schematic and you see sw stands for switch is the phase output then there is an integrated upper and lower mosfet right as you can see we have an ldo low drop out this is a linear voltage and we have our output which is pwm voltage right 3 volt pcu and the current output is maximum of 6 ampere and the peak to peak current which is 10 ampere right and as you can see we also have a feedback and this is a valid PWM circuit, right? Because we have a output coil, integrated MOSFET and PWM chip. We have filter capacitors and a feedback, and then we have the power good, which is output in the power good, right? So this is a complete PWM chip, all right? This class is not on a PWM. We are focusing on the standard timing. So let's go back to VCC DSW. All right, so it's powered by 3 volt PCU, and this is powered by PWM, as you can see, VCC DSW. So this is a VCC DSW which is the power supply and uh, it is this uh, uh, the deep sleep well power supply right so this board doesn't so, so most times these boards doesn't support the deep sleep so as far as I can see TVOPC is also going to power VCC PRIM 3P3 so automatically I know that this board doesn't support the deep sleep well right so let's take a look at the next timing so the next timing we're going to look at is DSW power OK so DSW power OK underscore power OK in, it indicates to the CPU that the deep sleep well power supply is OK and stable, right? So that's all it does. So as you can see, deep sleep comes first and after deep power OK is coming out, right? So let's look for that signal. Yeah, so we have DSW underscore PWR OK, all right? And as you can see, it is here coming to this only name so the name doesn't change as you can see the naming is not changed so it's the same name that is integrated in the schematic this is the standard timing of any sky lake or kb lake ult cpu now, regardless of the brand of the motherboard or the manufacturer of the motherboard or the brand the timing doesn't change right so dsw power ok is all put in to become d power ok and it's coming as d power ok if this board doesn't support DPOW, DSW power OK, then it will be connected with RSM reset signal. All right, so RSM reset signal and DPOW OK is connected together if the board doesn't support the deep sleep well. All right, see, RSM RST, which is connected to DPOW OK. So let's take a look at this. So it says for deep sleep three, if it doesn't support, if it supports then you're gonna install right if if it supports then R A is gonna be installed right R B this is R B and this is R A right if there is no deep sleep right then R B will be removed alright so so for deep sleep so take a look carefully this is a very important and crucial section if it does right if it supports right then there will be r a so they notice r a is not there but there is a direct connection right r b is for none right so there is a asterisk zero four which is indicating that there is no resistor there so this board does not support the deep sleep right so it's a short pad right r a s zero four s mean that it's short so the pad is there but between the pad there is a direct line a trace that is connected and it is connected to d power ok and d power ok right all right d power ok let's call it deep let's look where d power ok is coming from Oh, all after this take of the R. <laughs> all right, D for OK. All right, that's not it. That's not it. Eh? All right, D for OK. It's coming out from the EC, and this is our embedded. Oh, U, U8, 6B, U6B. This is normally coming from the EC, embedded controller, right? Yes, NPCE E58. All right. 
right and uh, there we go all right so this is a this is a gate it's an IC with an integrated gate and you can see high in high out it's, a, it's like a translator or a buffer signal output so 3d 3ds power load so this board does support the DC wow because it says 3D 3S power board, 3 volt PCU output, and then it is coming out to become D power OK. Oh, yes, D power OK. All right, plus 3 volt PC, which is a pull up, which is going to the PCA, the CPU, indicating that is a. So, let's go back to here. If it supports, then this would connect it to RSM reset. So, the RSM reset, which is RB, RB is for non deep sleep. All right and ds3 is for deep sleep ra so ra is installed and it is a direct connection so this board does support the depth of sleep All right deep or okay which is coming from the ec through that uh operator which is that gate and it's coming to here so this board is becoming deep or okay r so this board supports the deep sleep r same reset is not connected because as you can see none ds3 rb is disconnected so there is no part there's no component the asterisk is there and it's four then ra will have a direct connection so this board based on what i'm seeing from the schematic this board does support the depth of sleep all right so let's go back to the, the diagram as you can see here it is this is a signal buffer this is a chip with an internal uh isolator that's inside so a you have a b and y output so if a is high it will output high if if a, a is high it op if a and b is high it output i if a is zero and b is zero and y no output right so this is a like a signal buffer like a translator isolator sorry so high level 3.3 volts see 3 volt pc output 3 volt pc output right so high in high out low in low out that's how it works right like a follower like a follower so whatever comes in it just all put it out right so high low high low a b y right so this is how it works so uh in our, our electronic components class i'll teach you more about gates and not gates and or gates and and gates and nor gates and different types of gate in that class when i'm doing electronic uh basic uh, electronic foundation class so as you can see we are uh, on our way so we have done the rtc supply reset and clock the deep sleep well is okay all right and it is getting the power okay so this board does support the deep sleep now we're going to look at the slp sus signal so slp sus signal is all used to turn on the light sleep so this is for the deep sleep and this is for light sleep so this is deep sleep ds it's kind of difficult to type with the mouth to draw with the mouse so this is deep sleep power supply and this is light sleep power supply turn on signal slp sus so if the board supports the depth of sleep, then SLP sus will be in a high level. All right, so let's look for SLP sus. So S L P underscore S U S. All right. So SLP sus is released. So this board does support the depth of sleep, as you can see, right? E short pad. So the S, see S. Right, R21. The reason is not there, but there's a line that is connected between the two pads, and S stands for short. As you can see, it says short pad, and it becomes PCH underscore SLP underscore SLP sus, which is used to turn on the Intel the, the light sleep power supply. So let's take a look and see where this is coming from. Do where this is going? This is released from the PC the CPU to the uh, regulator to turn on the light sleep power supply. VCCP RIM. Uh oh. And it is going to the EC. So the EC pin 75 is used as another function and it is going to this SLP SUS. Right? It is not going to turn on the light sleep. But if it doesn't support, if it's not working, then it will go to a test point, something like this. So there is SLP SUS coming out and it's going to the EC. So this board does support the depth of sleep, right? Deep sleep. SLP SUS. So this is used to turn on the light sleep power supply all right all right next we have vcc prim 3p3 and vcc ats 1.8 this is the standby power supply vcc ats which is another standby and we have vcc prim 1.0 all right so vcc prim 
b c c p r i m underscore three p three right as you can see this is connected to here all right so bcc p r i m three p three output and coming to here you see and it's connected to three volt deep sleep source so as you can see this is a different naming if this was connected to three volt pcu then bcc dsw and bcc prim 3p3 will have the same power supply name see bcc prim 3p3 is connected to deep sleep so, so this board does 100 percent support the deep sleep right uh so this is it, the deep sleep power supply plus three volt deep sleep source so let's see where this is coming from That's not it. 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 Alright, so this is our. Uh, let me see this. Oh no, that's not it. Alright, that's not it. Let me go a little bit faster. Nope. Nope. No. Nope. Alright, so we're just going to see where this voltage is actually generated from. Whoops. Uh, nope, that's not it. It's not it. It's not it. It's not it. It's not it. it. Alright, so here we go. Let's take a look at this circuit. Alright, so we have 3 volt PCU in and 3 volt PCU in. So we have 2 in. Right and uh, the enable on one, LAN power on, LAN two, which is KBC power on. So an SLP source is released. Remember SLP source. When the EC gets the SLP source signal, it will immediately release uh, this signal. KBC power on. As you can see, there's a short connection there, meaning that the resistor is not there. So it's a direct line, and it is coming to pin number four, five. Sorry, of this chip. And then when on two comes out, then it will release out two, right? So when on two is released, then it will turn on the integrated uh, switch to turn on out two, and it becomes uh, three volt deep sleep, right? Three volt deep sleep source, right? So the KBC needs SLP source. If SLP source signal is not generated, if the signal is not generated, then we won't have the 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 VCC PRIM power supply hence the board cannot trigger it's still in a dead state right so when the PCH when the CPU release PCH underscore SLP source then the EC will immediately release KBC power on signal right and that is going to turn on the deep sleep the light sleep power supply which is VCC PRIM 3P3 PRIM 1.0 VCC ATS 1.8 right uh, I was looking for that signal alright alright so go back to deep source alright here we go alright so KBC power on, very important and crucial signal. I lock up the signal, no trigger, right? No trigger. You press the button, there is no response because it's the light sleep, the standby power supply for the CPU is not generated. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our timing. So we have VCC PRIM, VCC ATS 1.8. All right. So let's look for that. B C C A T S right underscore one point eight all right and that's generated from here as you can see one point eight deep sleep so the SLP source as I said before is you see these are light sleep power supply and one point eight which is also going to power one point eight underscore deep underscore source all right so let's go to see 
this is going to the ULT let's see where it's coming from all right zoom out a little here is it from the same or oh, another chip so we have 1.8 PCU all right 1.8 PCU and when we get that's one when we get on one see KBC power on again is powering on one and it will output 1.8 deep sleep sets so light sleep this board does support the deep sleep right and it is used to turn on the light sleep using SLP sus PC gets SLP sus and then if you immediately release KBC power on to turn on the light sleep power supply right so we have uh, VCC ATS VCC PRM 3P3 which is powered by the same KBC power on VCC PRIM 1.0 VCC PRIM 1 sorry underscore 1.0 alright here is it and it is also powered by 1.0 volt sus cycle through all right here is it 1.0 dc and this powered by a pwm so 5 volt pcu where we have 19 volts coming in and we have the enable who is enabling it and we have uh the power good when vcc prim and vcc ats power good is okay and it is coming then it will use the turn on here all right as you can see we have enable 1.0 oh sorry this is coming from another part which is a direct connection uh see who is sending that all right kbc power on see it is being renamed to one two three three after coming to this 10k resistor it is being renamed to enable one v zero always so this is also powered by light sleep. So they are all light sleep power supply, right? So VCC PRIM 3P3, VCC ATS 1.8, VCC PRIM 1.0. So when the EC gets its supply uh, working conditions of supply, reset and clock, and read its program, then it and gets the SLP source signal, then it will turn on KBC power on released and turn on the light sleep power supply. All right, and then uh, we have last, we have RSM reset. RSM reset is basically a confirmation signal to tell it the CPU that the, the standby voltages are okay. RSM RST. So the standby voltages are okay. And this is coming to the R uh, the PCH to the CPU. RSM reset. And uh, it's coming from our EC. Alright. Here it is. RSM reset is coming all from pin 85 of the EC and it's going to the PC the CPU. Alright. Mm. Alright, that's it. Alright, so RSM reset. So now it is waiting for the trigger. So the trigger is in the next set. The SUS clock is just a synchronization clock, which is a copy of the 32.768 clock. And it is sent to the EC as a synchronization clock. Most times it's not used. It's not really important. You can ignore it. So SUS, right? CLK, it's not really used. It's now sent to the EC as a SUS clock KBC. And this is a pulse square wave like this right instead of a sine wave you get a square wave like this right i don't i have to have a, a, a original copy of it and that's how it looks the sus clock it's and sent to the ec to the original clock pins to use as other functions right here see so 32.768 clock if it has it this has its own integrated clock and it's sent to the cp the ec as a 
synchronization clock for other functions not really use can ignore that all right so that concludes the timing all right this is our demo class on the in the full video it's paid you'll get the full information on how to use the timing diagram to troubleshoot your laptops all right thank you